This is Good Morning Indiana, working for you. And good morning to you. I'm Lauren Casey. The time right now is 427. It's Thursday morning. Thanks for joining us on Good Morning Indiana. Several stories to get to before we get into our show today. First, we want to talk about the stay-at-home order set to expire in Marion County on Friday. The mayor announcing yesterday the county's reopening plan. And you can see that the county is reopening much slower than other parts of the state, partially due to the higher number of cases and higher death toll they have here in Indianapolis in Marion County. So what we know are that public gatherings Friday increase from 10 to 25 people. Non-essential retail can open at 50% capacity. Malls opening with restrictions. And then we have more plans going forward from there. So we'll break that all down for you. What this means if you live or work or own a business here in Indianapolis. So that is coming up on the show. Before we get to any other stories though, we've got to talk about our forecast. You probably remember yesterday, Todd it was sort of the transition day and that we wouldn't get as cool at night. So Todd, now that we're into Thursday, what can people expect as they head out the door? Yeah, you know, you're walking out the door to warmer temperatures as we expected, Lauren, but you're also walking out the door to patchy, dense fog that is settling in and some scattered showers. And those are both products of the warm front finally making its way through the area. So you just got to be a little bit patient here uh, this morning. Temperatures are in the 50s, 57 in Muncie, 53 in Indianapolis, 58. We didn't really drop off and you can see some of those heavier showers now just to the west of Bloomington getting ready to work its way in. Once the warm front goes to the north that'll transition most of the shower activity into the northern portion of the state that is one that's when the warmth will start to build in so we're probably stuck in the 50s here this morning but as soon as that warm front goes through the temperatures will shoot up we'll get to right around 80 degrees across the area today and then additional storms will build in later on this afternoon but those should be pretty spotty in nature so today is not a washout we just got to deal with some showers this morning as the front goes through and then again this afternoon during the peak heating of the day, Lauren. All right, Todd, thank you so much. Let's talk about the number of cases here of COVID-19 in the state of Indiana. We get the updated numbers around noon each day. So here's what we know so far. The number of new cases reported in the state, 409, bringing the total number of positive cases since the pandemic began to more than 25,000. We also recorded 38 new deaths as of yesterday. And we can also tell you that the ICU beds and ventilators, that rate right there is at a stable number, the healthcare system not being overwhelmed at this time. So we'll break down the numbers a little further coming up here on the show. Something else we want to talk to you about today is people's internet. Our Rafael Sanchez is looking to help families who may be threatened or maybe disconnected due to their inability to pay right now due to tough financial times. A lot of kids needing internet for their e-learning. So we'll have that plus news, weather and traffic coming up. This is Good Morning Indiana, working for you. Now at 4.30 on Good Morning Indiana, we now have a clearer picture about the next steps for Marion County as Mayor Joe Hogsett lays out his timeline for reopening the economy. We're breaking down everything you need to know. Plus, for the first time, we're getting an idea of how hard the coronavirus is hitting the Hoosier State. What a new first-of-its-kind study is revealing about COVID-19 cases in Indiana. And this weekend, it will be first, all engines a go as NASCAR becomes yeah, the first major sport to return. Our day first talks to an Indy native who's gearing up for to race in Darlington. But before we get to our top stories today, we want to say thanks for joining us on Good Morning Indiana. I'm Lauren Casey, Todd Clausen, social distancing and working for from home again today. Todd, good morning to you. What can we expect as we head out there? It looks like you're taking a look at visibility and I noticed a little bit of patchy fog on my drive in this morning. Yeah, you know, Lauren, to get these warmer temperatures in here, we're going to have to go through a little bit of patchy fog this morning, but it's only an issue here this morning. And the good news is not nearly as many people commuting to work here this time of a year with everything going on. So it shouldn't be too much of an issue for us. You notice the visibility down to a half mile in Bloomington, just under two miles in Indianapolis. As the warm front moves north, the visibilities will decrease in northern locations as well. Temperatures this morning are in the 50s, so it's much warmer 
warmer this morning than it has been. And these temperatures will really, really shoot up as the day goes on with this warm front. Not only do we have the fog, you also notice we are dealing with some rain showers moving in. In fact, there's some heavier showers just pushing into the Terre Haute area. And these will make their way through most of uh, the area this morning as this warm front again pushes to the north. Eventually, highs will be climbing up into the upper 70s to right around 80 degrees. Just got to be patient here for a few hours this morning as we deal with the fog, the showers, and then we'll get into some partly sunny skies to enjoy these warm temperatures later on this afternoon. Lauren. All right, Todd, thanks so much. We do have some good news for drivers this morning. This is a change from your commute yesterday morning. This is a live look in the downtown area at I-65 and I-70 at the North Split. We can tell you that the lanes of I-70 traveling eastbound between the North Split and 465 are now open. Crews worked to open those last night, and so the signs are being taken down, the barrels are being moved, and you can get on 70 to go from downtown to the east side. However, the westbound lanes remain closed, and that's scheduled to not reopen until about May 24th, so we have a little over a week left to go until both directions are open, but should be good news if you're traveling through the spot in the north split. Those restrictions have been lifted. New from overnight, Metro Police are investigating a shooting on the city's south side. This happened around 115 on South Walcott Street. That's near Hannah Avenue and State Street. Police tell us that one person was shot. That person was taken to the hospital in critical condition. We're told they had been upgraded to serious but stable condition. There's currently no suspect information, but of course we'll bring you any updates just as soon as they come into the newsroom. Also new from overnight, at least one person was killed in a car crash in Johnson County. Police were called out to US 31 south of the Greenwood Park Mall just before 11 last night. Not much information is known at this time, and it's still unclear how many victims are involved. We will continue to update you as we learn more information. Now we want to get to the latest on Marion County stay at home order. Yesterday, Indianapolis Mayor Joe Hogg said announcing that we will be taking a few steps forward to loosen restrictions on public gatherings and reopening businesses. Starting tomorrow, public gatherings can increase from 10 to 25 people, including in person religious services, non essential retail businesses. Those can open at 50% capacity. Malls can also open with restrictions on capacity and food service. But other portions of Governor Holcomb's phase two reopening, which many other parts of the state already have in, those are going to have to wait. I know that these delays will be frustrating to some. But I assure you that we are making these decisions in an effort not just to reduce the prevalence of COVID-19 in our community now, but also reduce the likelihood that it returns in the future and forces stricter restrictions all over again. On May 22nd, in-person dining will be allowed, but only at restaurants with outdoor seating. Non-essential industrial and manufacturing operations will not open yet, and neither will hair or nail salons, barbershops, or other personal services. They are targeted for reopening on June 1st with social distancing if the data supports it. Mayor Hogg said did not release a timeline for the remaining phases of opening the city's economy. For the first time, we're getting a look at how many Hoosiers have or may have had COVID-19 during Wednesday's state task force briefing. Health officials discussed the preliminary results of a study that was done by IUPUI and the state health department. The testing included a random sampling of 4,600 people. Of those, 1.7% tested positive for COVID-19 and 1.8% tested positive for antibodies. Health leaders say this means among the general population, an estimated 186,000 Hoosiers have or have had the virus. The study also showed that COVID-19 is nearly six times more deadly than the flu. Health officials say the data reinforces the importance of social distancing and wearing masks as nearly 45% of people who tested positive showed no symptoms. We are showing that our social distancing policies and, and wearing masks makes a different difference. Whereas before in the United States, we'd never really had this kind of look at this. We didn't know what those social distancing things were going to do exactly. We thought they were going to make the impact that they did and, and we've shown that. The study also found that if you live with somebody who's infected, you're 12 times more likely to be infected yourself. There will be four phases of the study. Phase two begins in early June. Taking a look now at the latest numbers this morning, the State Department of Health reporting 409 new positive coronavirus cases, bringing the state's total number of positive cases to 25,473. An additional 38 confirmed deaths were also reported, and that means 1,482 Hoosiers have now died from COVID-19. The new numbers show 
154,083 people have been tested statewide with a rate of 16.5% positive. Intensive care unit and ventilator capacity remains steady in the state. More than 42% of the ICU beds and nearly 81% of the ventilators are available. Indiana will begin receiving weekly shipments of remdesivir. That's the antiviral drug shown to help coronavirus patients. Now, we told you earlier this week that one shipment was delivered to northern Indiana. Logansport Memorial Hospital up in Cass County has seen a high number of COVID-19 patients, most coming from the county's largest employer, the Tyson's Meat Plants. Now, the second was sent to the state health department. It will be sent to hospitals with the most severely ill patients. The drug has been shown to reduce the length of the patient's hospital stay. RTV6 says hiring Hoosiers is our commitment to connect you with job opportunities and resources. And it's even more important now with so many Hoosiers out of work. The Boone County Economic Development Commission will hold a virtual job fair next Wednesday to connect people with jobs in logistics and manufacturing areas. Boone County currently has more than 550 full-time positions in various industries. Next week's job fair is expected to be the first of many. And this one's set for May 20th at 1030 a.m. For more information on how to join, just go to Hiring Hoosiers. Com. And on Thursday, May 21st, the Department of Workforce Development will host a virtual job fair highlighting hundreds of temporary openings throughout the state with the U.S. Census Bureau. It's scheduled from 11 until noon. The jobs mostly involve going door to door collecting census data from residents. Those who go door to door in the field will be given personal protective equipment and sanitizer and also safety training. You can find a link to register at HiringHoosiers.com. Well, a lot of race fans are looking forward to the weekend when NASCAR becomes the first major sport to return after quarantine. And an Indiana native will be among the drivers racing at Darlington. Sports Director Dave First has more in this Sports Extra Spotlight. Cold Custard Review. It's been a nonstop series of finding things to do. With Stuart Haas driver Cole Custer making cold custard. Or Xfinity Series teammate in Mitchell, Indiana native Chase Briscoe getting full use of his virtual racing rig. There's light at the end of the tunnel for NASCAR. This weekend, it's back to work for real. It's almost go time. Uh, are, you, are you guys ready? Um, it's been fun, you know, got some home projects done, you know, and stuff like that. But, um, you know, I'm just ready to get back racing. Yeah, we're all ready to go. I mean, it's been fun. It was really fun the first couple weeks, but. At least on my end, I'm getting burnout. I'm ready to go back and do the real thing. You can always well, substitute. The, the, the beard so game is strong, though, Chase. The, the beard game's strong. It's it's getting cut off. It's about time. NASCAR has set up its own standard of safety. The drivers won't have any face-to-face -face interaction with officials or crewmen. They'll head to the cars 10 minutes before the race, climb in, and go. No practice, no qualifying. They won't even arrive at the track until race day morning. On a serious note, any apprehension about getting back into it well it's going to be strange compared to normal is not having fans there you know you don't get to see all the fans in the stands i feel like at the track we're going to be pretty safe like i said even if you win there's no high fives no hugging no nothing so we're all going to be doing everything we can because we all want to go back racing as well it's also a part of a bigger picture for Tony Stewart's team. The series stopped in March. The team quickly turned its attention to making webcam carts for local doctors to use in intensive care units where remote monitoring of COVID patients is key. Obviously, we have a lot of fabricators. We have a lot of CNC machines, so we can make just about anything. Between doing that and then even we've been using the race haulers to, to transport stuff just because we can put so much stuff on them. A true road to recovery, and NASCAR will begin it. Do you feel like the eyes of the world are, are going to be on you guys for the next couple of days? Yeah, I think so. I mean, we're the only sport, you know, especially major sport, that's going to be going on. You know, it's what we do for a living. It's what we, you know, dream to do as a kid. So I think we always want to be in a race car. But uh, it's definitely going to be stressful with no practice or qualifying. But we'll uh, we'll make it happen. And fans, and maybe new ones. So many can't wait. Day first, RTV Six Sports. Well All right, thank you, Dave. Everybody, I think, looking forward to getting a little bit of sports back uh, in their lives. So that'll be good to see. All right, satellite radar picture shows showers and storms making their way into central Indiana. This is part of the warmer air that's finally working its way back into the forecast. Highs near 80 this afternoon. We'll talk more about the storm chances and how long they're going to stick around coming up when Good Morning Indiana continues. The time now is 441. You're watching Good Morning Indiana right here on RTV6. Days from 430 to 7. 
Welcome back. It is 444. A grim prediction this morning from a government scientist. Dr. Rick Bright filed a whistleblower complaint after he was ousted from leading the effort to develop a coronavirus vaccine. Bright appearing before lawmakers this morning as the battle over when and how to open business continues. ABC's Inez de la Cotera is in Washington now with the latest. In prepared testimony obtained by ABC News, Dr. Rick Bright is expected to tell lawmakers today that the country faces unprecedented illness and fatalities without additional preparation, adding, without clear planning and implementation of the steps that I and other experts have outlined, 2020 will be the darkest winter in modern history. Bright recently oversaw production of a coronavirus vaccine, but claimed he was demoted after recommending against the use of a malaria drug pushed by President Trump as a possible cure to COVID-19. I was pressured to let politics and cronyism drive decisions over the opinions of the best scientists we have. The Department of Health and Human Services responding it strongly disagrees with the allegations and characterizations in the complaint from Dr. Bright. Bright's testimony comes as the nation's top infectious disease expert, Dr. Anthony Fauci, warned lawmakers earlier this week about a possible second wave if states and schools reopen too quickly. There is a real risk that you will trigger an outbreak that you may not be able to control. Those you comments know, at odds with the president. Just, to me, it's not an acceptable answer, especially when it comes to schools. Well, I think they should open the schools, absolutely. This, as new CDC guidelines meant to help businesses and communities reopen, are reportedly being blocked by the White House, saying they're too restrictive. In Wisconsin, the state Supreme Court now striking down the governor's stay-at-home order, finding it unlawful. In California, beaches are back open in Los Angeles County, but with restrictions. An internal White House document reportedly shows new cases spiking in Nashville and Des Moines Central City, while Kentucky reports a massive increase as of May 7th. In Estelacuatera, ABC News, Washington. A Wisconsin court is paving the way for businesses to reopen there. The state Supreme Court overturned the stay-at-home order on Wednesday, calling it, quote, unlawful and unenforceable. The emergency order was first issued back in March and then extended until May 26th. According to the ruling, dictating the lives of law-abiding citizens so comprehensively reaches beyond the executive branch's authority. Similar lawsuits have been filed in Virginia, Illinois, Arizona, California, and others. Lack of internet connection isn't a new problem in rural areas, but learning and working from home is drawing some new attention to it. That's why a Senate committee is looking at ways to expand service. The Emergency Educational Connections Act would ensure that all K-12 students have access to adequate home broadband connectivity and devices during the COVID-19 pandemic. It would allocate $4 billion to help schools and libraries distribute laptops or tablets for distance learning. Money would also go towards connection equipment like routers and hotspots. New research shows the coronavirus could stay in the air for as long as 14 minutes after talking. The study found that talking loudly for one minute in a confined space could generate at least 1,000 speech droplets. And if someone were to inhale them, they could potentially trigger new infections. This was tested by having a person repeat different phrases in a closed air environment. Researchers then observed how long it took the large droplets to shrink as they evaporated and hung in the air. Researchers say the biggest takeaway is reinforcing the need to wear a mask in public. It is for 47. Let's toss things over to Todd right now for a check of what we can expect in today's forecast. Hey, TK. You know, there's actually quite a bit going on in the forecast here for the day today, Lauren. We're starting off with some showers and also some visibility issues. You know, to south of Indianapolis, visibility down to around one mile in many locations. So it's not a huge issue, and this is all part of the warmer air that's starting to work its way into uh, the forecast. So if you do have to get on the roadways, just know visibilities will be dropping in northern locations as well as this warmer air makes its way to the north. As far as the rain goes, we're dealing with some Thunderstorms now approaching Terre Haute area. Nothing severe here, but some pretty good downpours. You also notice a shower just south of Nashville as far as this batch of rain. It's moving towards Brazil. Be there towards the top of the hour in Bloomington. You'll get into some of that heavier rainfall a little after uh, 5 o'clock here this morning. Again, this is the warm front that we talked about yesterday that's finally making its way through the area. And this is going to usher in some very, very mild temperatures for the remaining 
Rainer of the Week and all the way uh, through the weekend for that matter. And all the showers today for the most part are going to be focused along the warm front. So where the warm front is, that's where the best opportunity for rain will be. So it's some spotty showers and downpours here throughout the morning hours by about 7.30, 8 o'clock. This front is pushing off to the north. And then look at the breaks in the clouds uh, once we get towards the noon hour. Today by no means as a washout. There's some spotty showers this morning, a lot of dry hours this afternoon. And then during the peak heating of the day, there will be another line of storms that makes its way into the area kind of a broken line of storms. It should be a pretty thin line as well. That'll bring some rain chances back. So there are two opportunities for rain this morning and then late afternoon, early evening. Uh, but in between, a lot, a lot of dry hours. The Storm Prediction Center does have about the northern half of the state under the slight risk for severe weather. The main threat would be some gusty winds and maybe a little bit of small hail with these storms, but uh, not looking at a tornado threat here for the day today. Here's your temperature trend. Again, quick warming. We're into the 70s already by the noon hour, around 80 degrees later on this afternoon. The longer we can keep the sunshine around this afternoon, uh, the warmer those temperatures will be. As we work our way into Friday, it's another day when that front is just kind of lingering across the area and that is going to keep showers and a few storms in the forecast for the day tomorrow. Saturday, not a washout. There's some sunshine mixed in, 78 degrees, a little better chance of more widespread rain on Sunday. And then once that front goes through. A little bit cooler heading into Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday, but plenty of sunshine to start the work week next week. Lauren. All right, Todd, thanks so much. Let's take a look at traffic as you're heading out on the roads. This is down the south side, I-465 near East Street, US 31. You can see everything on the interstate is traveling up to speed. No delays to slow you down and no crashes to report around the metro area at this early hour. It's 451. Mattel is expressing its gratitude to first responders with a new initiative, the hashtag Thank You Heroes program. From from today through Sunday, the company will donate a doll to the First Responders Children's Foundation for every career Barbie doll or playset sold. The line of dolls features a number of essential professions, including doctors, nurses, firefighters, scientists, and food service employees. Up to 30,000 dolls will be donated to the foundation, which was established after 9-11 as a way to financially support children who have lost a parent in the line of duty or who are currently experiencing financial hardships. Puzzles have never been more popular as people People try to keep themselves occupied while spending more time at home. And now Heinz Ketchup is getting in on the fun with this extreme challenge. The company recently gave away 57 of these 570 all red puzzles. It's a nod to the brand's famous logo. The puzzle was part of a contest promotion on social media. No word yet on if they plan to sell or give away more. That one could be a little tricky. Students and teachers in McCordsville reunite for some social distancing fun. Coming up, how one elementary school is keeping weekly tradition alive. And coming up all new at 5, as more developments pop up across Hancock County, some people are being asked to sell their farm space, to farmland rather, to make more space. Working for you, we're looking into what you need to do before you sell. It's 4.52. Stick around, we'll be right back. 1850 Coffee, quality that's criminal. Well, this has been a hard time for teachers who are separated from their students and students separated from their teachers. That's why teachers at one McCordsville school decided to reconnect with their students at a safe distance, of course. <laughs> That's McCordsville Elementary art teacher Terry Trowbridge leading the musical portion of yesterday's drive through at the school for students and their families. This is something the school does regularly through throughout the year on delayed start Wednesdays with the kids out of school. Instructional aides Miss Pat led the charge to continue this tradition and she stayed true to her tradition wearing a wig every Wednesday. See the kids, I miss them so much. The teachers miss them. We just love the kids here. This is what we do. Teachers lined the parking lot and the kids came through waving and holding signs, eager to see familiar faces at a very safe distance. Oh, I bet that was a fun day for all those kids out there. And if people have parades or any plans today, Todd, what do they need to watch out for? 
Yeah, you know, there's some showers out there this morning, but I agree with you, Lauren. It's had to be very exciting for the kids to see their teachers, and what a great job there out in McCordsville by those teachers and the school staff. Here is a satellite radar picture. You can see showers and storms moving in. This is part of the warm front coming in. We'll deal with some showers and storms this morning, and again this evening. We'll talk all about them and the temperatures coming up when Good Morning Indiana continues. The time now is 4.57. We're back in just a few minutes.